Bye.
Blessed child is born, unto what the Son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. His name shall be called Angel of Mighty Counsel. O sing unto the Lord a new song, for he hath done marvelous things. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. His name shall be called Angel of Mighty Counsel. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee, and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Service, that he may win with thee and thy servants everywhere the eternal victory 
through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigns with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, ever in one God, world without end. Amen. <clears throat> The epistle is written in the second chapter of the Blessed, Paul, Blessed Apostle Paul's letter to the Philippians, beginning at the ninth verse. God also, also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Here endeth the epistle. Thanks be to God.
And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. In the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. We bow our head and bend our knee. We bow our head at the name of Jesus. We bend our knee in prayer and when we genuflect. I am sometimes amused when a football player in the end zone takes a knee, meaning he's not going to try to run the ball out of the end zone. And as he does that, he executes, executes, executes almost a perfect genuflection. Yet to bow your knee is to show deference, literally or figuratively. And in this case, the player is doing neither. In scripture, we see some form of the phrase, every knee shall bow, in many places, from Isaiah to Revelation. First chapter of Matthew tells us, the angel of the Lord having appeared to Joseph in a dream, thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now the name of Jesus means God is salvation, and as derived from the Hebrew Yeshua, to deliver, to rescue. Thus Jesus could have no other given name, not Henry, not Willie, not Sam. No other name would properly fulfill the prophecies of the Messiah coming to save by dying. In Isaiah 45, God proclaims his uniqueness. I have sworn by my own name, I have spoken the truth, and I will never go back on my word. Every knee will bend to me, and every tongue will confess allegiance to me. In light of his incarnation and death, God the Father raised Jesus to the highest place, giving him the sacred divine name, allowing him to receive the worship of the world. Jesus is, in the mystery of the Trinity, the Son who rightly receives the honor God claimed for himself in Isaiah 45. Jesus, as the Alpha and the Omega, possessed his authority from the beginning. He now took it upon himself as man as the one who saves, and the only Savior. This is a prime example of the New Testament fulfilling the new, the New Testament fulfilling the old, and not contradicting it. And this is an ineffable, an ineffable revelation, illustration, that everything in the Bible is connected from Genesis to Revelation. Yet the chief point, the chief point here, is the words should and shall. Now everyone should confess Jesus, but not everyone does. This recognition, beginning when Jesus walked the earth and continuing even now, can be only a work in progress until Christ returns to deliver up the kingdom to the Father. None of the false prophets and dictators throughout history has ever had 100% approval. No one has. Now Christianity is an openly public faith. It proposes not just that some people, but that every human being, whoever lived, who will live, and is living at the time of Christ's return, shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Everyone, from Genghis Khan, to your doctor, your Mother Teresa, to Saddam Hussein, now somehow, either willingly or unwillingly, bend the knee to him and confess, either willingly or unwillingly, that Christ is Lord. Of course, Orthodox Christianity does not propose 
that all these people will thereby be saved, rescued, and will spend eternity with God. That would be to accept the misguided doctrine of universal salvation, which declares that in the end, everyone, everyone, including Satan, will be saved. Orthodox Christianity does not even propose that all who confess Jesus at whatever point are necessarily aware, even in their sins, that they are being used to bring glory to God. As, for example, Judas' betrayal of our Lord ultimately led to our Lord's glorious resurrection. But it, is not, it does not completely assure us that no matter what, at the end of the day, that is the last judgment, God will be all in all. Every knee, every knee, this means everyone, not only the heroes of the Bible, but the villains, not only the heroes of history, but the villains, not only the humble, but every vain celebrity, every Republican, every Democrat, every Anglican, every other kind of Christian, non-Christians of every variety, all will bend their knees to Jesus in the end. Now, some knees are going to bend fluidly for the benefit of a lot of practice. And some may crackle under the pressure of a first-time experience. Some people will be kneeling in the company of the heavenly angels, while others singe their knees on the coals of hell. Every knee shall bow. Every knee. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. Let us pray. The heavens are thine, the earth also is thine. Thou hast laid the foundations of the round world, and all that therein is. Righteous and equity of the habitation of thy seed.
My sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord receive your sacrifice at the end, who prays the Lord of men, and all that is in the Lord of the Holy Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church. <clears throat> Almighty and ever living God, the one thy holy apostles taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men. We humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations, and to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word, and live in unity in God's in love. We beseech thee also so to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers, that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice, and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Through grace of Holy Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation your presence, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, duly serving thee in the holiness and righteousness, all the days of their life. We most humbly beseech of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. Remember especially Shane, our primate, Joe, our president, Kim, our governor, Alex, Barry, Leonie, Deb, Deborah, Donna, Eric, Karen, Kevin, Kyle, Logan, Louise, Lucille, Megan, Michelle, Miranda, Norma, Pat, Paul, Rex, Rising Sun, Sandy, Sandy, Sarah, Susan, Suvi, Tamara, Teresa, and Joaquin, our U.S. military, especially Edmund and Jason, all victims of terrorism, aggression, starvation around the world, peace and justice in the world, all victims of the coronavirus, all victims of the corona wildfires. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants depart this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to give us grace so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant us, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Ye who control your nerves and repent of your sins, and our love and charity with your neighbors, and send that we gain new life, following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God, devoutly kneeling. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past. And grant that we never hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Holy Father, who with great mercy and promised forgiveness of sins, to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ said, 
And to all truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Here also what St. Paul said, This is a true saying worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Here also what St. John said, If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. <clears throat> The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very right, meet, right, and abound in duty that we should at all times and in all places. Give thanks unto thee, 